Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we will discuss how divorced women over 30 struggle to find a suitor for a relationship, how difficult dating is nowadays, and why men let them hit the wall. We want to invite you to smash that like button and help us reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year to earn our first plaque. That's the only contribution we ask from you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who might need it. And without further ado, let's get started. So I'm divorced and remarried and I got married really quick the second time. I'm talking like engaged and married within a few months. And someone recently asked me, how did I know my husband was the right person for me, especially after all I'd been through? And I found what I wrote and I just feel like you need to save this and write it down in your manifesting journal. Okay, I wrote, this man pursued me so intentionally, it melted away any insecurities because he showed me I was more important than relationship games. He adored me so much that I never had room to question if I was good enough. He respected me so well that I never questioned my worth with him. He was so wonderful to me that it made me want to be my very best self for him. And then I finish it off with, what made me fall in love with him as an adult so quickly without too much questioning anything was the way he made me feel about myself with his actions. Note that I didn't say how he made me feel in general, any fuck boy can make you feel giddy and excited. It's how his actions made me feel about myself as an individual. Anyways, I wrote this about two years ago when we had been married four years and now we've been married six and a half years and I still feel the exact same way about him. So go back and rewatch my video, write down everything that I wrote about my husband and put it in your journal because every girl deserves a guy like that. And they're out there, I promise. You just gotta dig for them. Dig and dig and dig, but they're there. I'm Monica, I share my mistakes in love and life so you don't have to make them. Okay, love you, bye. Forget about manifestations and all that nonsense. Anyone who believes in that will end up single. The first thing is that you didn't find the perfect man. You quickly found your rebound relationship. When a woman divorces, she meets someone after a few months and gets engaged right away, especially when it comes to getting remarried. This man was either there from the moment she started thinking about divorce, or she panicked because of her age and found a beta provider who would do anything for her, deciding not to let him go. Remember, women like to secure their financial future, and who better for this than the beta provider? She made a mistake with the first one. She won't with the second. Remember, women are very aware of their age. They know when time is running out. But they also know that the higher their beauty, the better the candidates. This man was probably a good candidate, especially economically. If the first marriage was for love, the second will be for security. <laughs> this one here is for all my girlies over 30. Recently, I came across this YouTube video of a young man and he had a bunch of men on his life and while he was recording. And my conclusion of the three hour long video is that men nowadays, no matter how old they are, they're only interested in girls between the ages of 18 and 25. Now you tell me now, where does that left we? Where are we over 30 and 41 left? Now, me not have to worry about it, you know, because me well married for 22 years, but life takes its twists and turns. So does it mean that once you turn 30, 25, does it fail? No man no want you again? Uno let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Much love. Women like to confuse their personal value with their value in the dating market. Why do men prefer younger women? Typically, they have less sexual experience and tend to be more optimistic and lovers of life. Many are not interested in settling down, they just want to have fun. Many are not single mothers or desperately searching for a ring. Some don't want to have children and just want to enjoy life. If it's for commitment, these are women who, if they want to have kids, you might be the first. They are more fertile, young, and beautiful. Most importantly, Dating doesn't feel like a job interview. So tell me, how can a man not be attracted to a younger woman if you've hit the wall? The wall is unforgiving. The way our generation dates is wild. I mean, firstly, there are a million dating apps, which is not a bad thing because I know beautiful stories and a lot of stories where people get married off of meeting each other on a dating app. But you're basically swiping left or swiping right. Um, depending on how much you find that person physically attractive and vice versa, right? So that's that's interesting to me. But people are really out here full on dating. I mean, they're on their 10th date. They're traveling together. They're having sex. They're making plans for the future. And then they get the ick about something and they're like, thank you, bye. 
ghosted. We're done here. Like, we literally took Ariana Grande's song, Thank You, Next. Literally. I don't like the way that you smile. Thank you, next. I don't like the way that you chew. Mm, next. I don't like the way that you walk in little slippers. Thank you, next. Like, it's, it's crazy because there's a million options, right? So no one is finding stability in dating. They're like, oh, wow, if we disagree on something and you're giving me the ick on this, why would I stay when I have a million other choices and a million other swipe right, swipe lefts that I can have and do? My peers, my friends are going through so much hardship in dating. And it is a, not just a one person issue. It's, you know, communication goes both ways and dating goes both ways. But like, you don't think the people that are truly in happy, like marriages didn't fight or that they don't have icks about one another. Like I look at my relationship with two and a half years with my partner and I think about the amount of good arguments we had to have to have this beautiful foundation, right? Like there was one point where I was like, wow, we really can't see eye to eye. Like you don't believe what I believe and this is clashing. So how do we figure out a way to meet in the middle? And there's just no more middle in dating in our generation anymore. There's no more finding the middle. And so I don't know, this was, I just needed to rant a little bit because it's a little scary. Like we wonder why divorce rates are super high. We wonder why the marriage rate is super low. We wonder why people aren't getting married or having children. And it's like, stop it, get some help. In these times, when you can connect with the world with just one click, people are preferring less contact. Women, in particular, are getting more attention than they've ever had in their lives. That's why you see women who are a four thinking they're a seven, because there's a huge number of simps giving them attention. Almost 60% of men are invisible to women. A woman, if she wants, can go out with up to 10 guys or more in a month. How could she make an effort to get to know someone when, after finishing a date with you, there's already a better suitor waiting. But here's the catch. A man can go out with 10 women if he is a man of value who has done things right, and it's possible nine of them want something serious with him. A woman goes out with 10 men, and it's very likely that all 10 want to be intimate with her but not offer a relationship. Remember, for a woman to sleep with a man, she must make an emotional investment. A man is quite the opposite. If it's being offered to him, of course, he will take it. That's why a man, after being intimate, looks for qualities in a woman for a relationship. A woman, to avoid being deceived, looks for the qualities of a relationship before being intimate because, after making her emotional investment, she wants commitment, not just increasing her body count. If you start dating after narcissistic abuse, here's a couple of tips of things you should think about practicing. Number one, don't start dating until the love bomber is long gone in the rearview mirror because you'll be going on dates comparing them to a fantasy. The love bomber was an idolized version of your perfect partner. You'll be seeking that and comparing that in other people and that just doesn't exist. So take some time to detach away from any meaning or thought you have about who the love bomber was. Number two, learn how to validate yourself. Don't go into relationships seeking for external validation. Learn to be okay in your own skin. You should be having no negative self-talk if you can really healthy validate yourself. Get to know yourself. You validate yourself when you really get to know who you are. Three, remove any self-doubt you have about who you really are so that no one can come in and tear you down about any parts of you because you really own those parts of you. Four, make sure you have healed the parts of you that are afraid to have boundaries. Most of the time, if we don't have boundaries, that's because we have parts of us that are afraid that we'll be abandoned or won't have attachment. And finally, rebuild yourself. Your sense of self is completely stripped when you're with a narcissist. You have to spend some time getting to know yourself. Oh, and one more thing. Create a space of peace for yourself. Live alone, loving life independently, so that if it ever goes awry in a relationship, you're not too afraid to let it go because you've created a space of peace for yourself and you'll never live not in peace again. Stay strong, you've got this. Do you know why dating divorced women tends to go wrong? It's because of timing. If the divorce took a year and she started dating afterward, the relationship with this woman might be good. But if it's a short time, like the first girl, then watch out. Man, you might be getting used as her rebound. This happens to many men who date single mothers, especially when the baby is not even a year old. They date her while the dad is still in close contact, and she's still in that couple dynamic. 
She looks for you as a temporary replacement. Then she realizes you're a new man with different habits and a different relationship dynamic. That's when she goes back to the bad habits she probably had with her ex, sabotages the relationship, or leaves you to return to her ex. Almost always, this happens after she has taken some money from you or made you pay off some debts or spend on her baby. For reasons like this, we always say the past matters. If it hasn't been long since it ended, you'll just be the rebound. I'm going to give you three tips for dating after divorce. What to do to get back in the game. All right, tip one. Hell, I may give you more than three today. Who knows? Tip one that comes to my mind is don't be fearful. That's number one, okay? Because mindset is everything. And if you're afraid, then that's going to translate to absolutely everything you do. And if you're afraid to get on the dating apps or afraid to go out and meet people, it's going to be just obvious in your vibe and energy. So number two, and this is some good advice I'm going to give you here. <laughs> um, have your story set. Have some go-to answers for when that person is going to ask you questions because there are natural dating questions that are gonna come up. Like, how long have you been divorced? Have you dated much? Do you and the ex get along? What's the custody arrangement? Why did you get divorced? And if you don't want to talk about those things, then have a set answer so that you briefly answer they don't deserve to know everything. They don't deserve, even if they ask, they don't deserve to know everything until you know if you really, really like them. So if you had a really hard, shitty divorce and you were married to a psycho, you are not going to say that. You're going to say, you're going to say, well, the divorce took a little longer than we'd hoped, but it's done and we've both moved on. Learned a lot during the marriage, grew apart. Those are very easy go-to things. And then, and then you have a thing where you're already ready to change the subject. So tell me about you. What's the best restaurant you've been to lately? You know, I mean, just come up with something. So have things at the ready so that you're not caught off guard. All right, hang on. When getting back in the game, you want to make sure that you are picking partners that are appropriate for you. All right, so just remember if they're fit, they want somebody fit. Usually if they have kids at home, you'd be a better match. If you have kids at home, if you're an empty nester, you want to find an empty nester. You want to find somebody who looks like they're realistic for you, for your lifestyle. You know, you don't want to pick anybody that like is super inappropriately young or looks like they have a party lifestyle if that is not your lifestyle. So be realistic. Oh, I'm going to give you another one. What the hell? <laughs> All right. Make sure that you treat dating not like a chore, like it's fun because you are get the opportunity to now meet new people. So now your possibilities are endless. So your glass is not half empty. Your glass is half full. So when you go out on dates, do not be the sad sack that's down in the dumps. Who wants to date that person? No one, okay? You will always want to, even if you have to plan it ahead of time, some things that you want to talk about that you find interesting, that you find fun, because you've got to go on dates and be upbeat, happy, and looking forward to the future. Oh, I just thought about one other one. Hang on, I got one more for you. Last but not least, don't talk about your past. Do not get tricked into being pulled into a rabbit hole of talking about your past, talking about your ex, talking about your past life in the good old days. No. Somebody dating you wants to talk about what the two of you might be able to do together in the future. So people want to date people who are optimistic and happy about the future, not stuck on the past. Okay? Okay. I hope it helps. If you're dating a woman who has just come out of a divorce or a bad relationship, watch out for two things. First, if she talks a lot about her ex, it's a red flag. It's a sign she hasn't gotten over him or that Chad was the man she loved the most. The second thing is her behavior after the divorce. If she tells you she's been going out a lot, distracting herself, or badmouthing her ex, making it seem like he was always at fault and she never did anything wrong, these are bad signs. She's someone who never takes responsibility for her actions and is trying to distract herself to avoid facing her problems. When they're like this, you end up with women who use you as a rebound. They only want you for the moment 
which isn't bad if it's just for intimacy. The problem is when you see her as a long-term partner because that's a recipe for disaster. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. Have you ever dated a divorced woman? How did it go for you? What do you think is a bad sign when dating divorced women? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.